Welcome to Cywell Airfield and the launch of the brand new Hayabusa, the Generation 3 Hayabusa. We've got a couple of different events going on today. This morning we've got a 138 mile ride on the British UK roads to really test this machine, see what it's like on the roads. And this afternoon we get let loose on the airfield. So we're going to be launching the bike, testing out the launch control and seeing what how big our balls are and who can get the highest top speed. With a big fatty on it, a big COVID fatty, I'm not holding out much hope, but it's going to be fun either way. Drop C, roll the intro. So the Hayabusa, everyone knows it. It's it's like the uh, like the Fireblade. That's one of those bikes which is just iconic, absolutely iconic. Yeah, the first of the hyper bikes really. Came out in '99. Was refreshed, I think, in 2002 for the Gen 2 version. This is the Gen 3 version. In the UK, this bike disappeared. I think it was two years ago. It, it couldn't meet Euro 4. So this bike hasn't been for sale in the UK for a couple of years, um, but it has, you know, it's been for sale in the States and stuff like that. But it's back to the UK now in this new Gen 3 version. 187 horsepower, 150 newton meters of torque. She's not shy, 264 kilos wet. So the hyperbikes, I mean, this is a hyperbike. When, when I first heard that Suzuki were bringing back the Hayabusa to the UK, I was like, is there a place for this sort of bike? You know, what, what purpose does it serve? You know, it's not a full-on tourer, even though you can get luggage for it. You know, it's not a comfortable touring position. It is more sort of sports bike orientated, but then it's a big, a big heavy bike. So it doesn't really fit into the full-on sports bike category so it's an interesting it's sort of in a, in a place of its own really this bike i guess you can compare it to things like the h2 but i guess that is really its closest competitor we had the press briefing last night and it was you know people asked why did they not do more with this you know some people are very disappointed they haven't come out with a six cylinder or a, a turbo version you know, they wanted the bike to be a reasonable price if they'd done that it would have been 25 grand 23 grand you know they wanted it to be affordable and i think 16 and a half thousand it's it's a great price the bike has 550 changes over the gen 2 version and they've done a lot of work the engine is now it's not the same engine it's got different cams different pistons different gearbox and they've done a lot of work to the engine i think only really the casings are the same all the internals have changed all the valves you know so it has been overhauled they've made it more durable they reckon it's now got forged pistons as well so if you're looking for a bike to do a, a turbo conversion or i mean turbo booster now it's got forged piston standard <laughs> so buy this for six and a half grand spend five grand on your own supercharger or turbo conversion there you go. So, launch control, you hold that down. Then you go up and down here, three different levels. a bit 
bit quicker off the line there, I reckon. Could have dumped the clutch a bit more aggressively. I may have feathered the clutch out too much. It started coming up. Lift anti wheelies on level four, but it was I was proper lifting up at the front. One of the biggest surprises is actually the suspension. How plush it is. That is, you know, this is a sports bike. This is definitely a sports bike, but it's not got really harsh suspension. It handles beautifully, but it's just plush. I really like what they've done with the ride. It's obviously KYB suspension. DLC coated stanchions at the bottom, so they're like all black. Obviously fully adjustable. But it's just got a lovely poise. For such a big bike, I mean, it is a big bike. It doesn't crash, you know, it soaks the bumps up, but it still gives you fun in the twisties as well. We'll wait there, we won't risk that one. And this is a bumpy, undulating road. It's just lovely over those bumps. One thing Suzuki have done for this year, they've, they've massively updated the electronics. This is the most technologically advanced Suzuki ever, even more so than the GSX-R, which is looking a bit dated compared to this on the electronic front. Full IMU, of course, full access IMU, so you've got the cornering traction, cornering ABS, you know, all of that excellent stuff. You've also got anti-wheelie and traction control, and they've done the fantastic thing of separating the anti-wheelie from the traction. So you've got separate lift control to your traction control. So you can leave your traction on, turn your anti-lift off, pull as many wheelies as you like, but still have traction control. That's fantastic. And what's even better is once you save those settings, you can turn the bike on and off, and it will remember that you've got your anti-wheelie off. There's no nanny defaulting it back on, it remembers your settings. Nah, we've got the active data now, so we've got the lean angles on the screen there, using the IMU to display the lean angles and stuff. And it keeps your maximum lean angle as well, it's quite a nice little touch. Anything bad to say at this midpoint? Well, not really. Only slightly bad points I've picked up on so far is there's a bit of waggle in the throttle tube. That could just be the, that could just be this bike. This this is ride by wire, but it does use cables from the throttle grip to the module, which then sort of interpret interprets that analog signal to digital, if you like. So it's not at the actual grip where it's directly digital, if you see what I mean. So there is cables involved. So probably a little tweak of the cable length, and you can probably get rid of that slight bit of waggle. That is the, one of the advantages with actually having cables, that you can get the throttle to feel like a conventional throttle. So that's probably just the, just this bike. Um, it's quite tight on it. The, the pegs are quite high. And after sort of an hour or so of riding, you start to feel it a little bit on your knees. It is a sports bike, and I think of it as a sports bike. It's nice to hang off on, move around on. The brakes seem very good as well. Those Stylima calipers seem perfect for the road setup. So that's lift TC3, lift 3, anti wheelie 3, traction control 3. Okay. So you turn that off yeah, it will remember that now. You won. Oh, another shot at this. Shut my visor before I go this time. Go on, Tony. Tony's been struggling with the quick shift, he reckons. He's only ever ridden bikes in the 1970s before, so he's not used to this modern stuff. He's trying a manual launch. No, he's not. It's not the quickest launch I've ever seen. That'll be the uh, rev limiter, Tony. He's still struggling with the quick shifter by the look of it. Right, traction, launch control, level two. 
Fires are down this time. Oh, I bet you can start breaking there. I thought I broke way too early again. Bottled it. I saw over 150 but bottled it. I thought that was the line. It's not that one. It's not. I've got one more go. I've got one more go. Potholes just rides over the bad tarmac. Like I say, you don't get masses of feedback from the tyres. You don't get masses of feedback from the tyres, but you just you do get confidence without having to be subjected to every little bit of texture, you know, of that tarmac. Yeah, it, yeah I think they've got the, the handling, poise, chassis balance spot on. Spot on. It does the thing whereby when you brake really hard, it flashes the hazards. So if you see, see a bike in front with the hazards flashing, you know you're they're properly on the brakes. <laughs> oh, it's just it's just effortless. It just covers distance effortlessly. Compared to the H2, it's much it's a much nicer road bike than my H2. I have to say, much more comfortable. As much torque, I would say, up until about 7,000 RPM, and that, then the H2, the supercharger. I mean, mine's 240 horsepower, so of course. It's going to be quicker at the top end. Handling wise, I don't know, this is pretty good. The H2, my H2 is a bit softer as, as well, a bit like this. I think the H2 is a bit firmer than this. You can feel the tarmac a little bit more on the H2. The wheelbase is also shorter on the H2. It's quite a long wheelbase, this, which will pay dividends when we come to the launching on the runway later on. But over these horrible surface here, it's lovely. It disguises the condition of the tarmac completely. You can hang out the seat. You can do all that with it. You haven't got to stay sat in the seat. It's got a nice areas to grip with your knees. It's quite wide, obviously. So there's plenty to grip onto. Ah, oh, it's a shame there's a truck here though. I would have liked to have smashed it around that bend there. Tight twisties. <sighs> yeah, it changes direction. Really nicely, actually. For a big 260 kilo bike. Pressed. Look at that. That's a bit of motorcycle in front of you. So agile, I could steer it with my ass cheeks. You know, I don't know how they, you know, they, they've set the weight of this bike, but there's a nice bit of weight over the front, which gives you the ability to for it to change direction. Look at that. Lovely. First gear. Oh, I'm scared. Rubbish launch. Oh, boo. <laughs> I tried to hold it on until I cross that second line, but that is quite scary. You've got to be brave to hold that on the gas until you cross that final white line. There is not much time to stop then. And that was a rubbish launch. That wasn't the best. That was rubbish that time. Yeah. What, off the line? Yeah, I wasn't very good. I wasn't very good. Hmm. Look at those clocks, bloody lovely.
little throttle. There's brake pressure. Brake pressure on the top right quadrant. <laughs> Throttle on the left. I'm not sure what that is on the bottom right. Is that a rear brake? Surely not. Oh, it is. It's rear brake. That's rear brake pressure. Front brake pressure. That's good, isn't it? Rear brake pressure. I was having a chat with some of the guys back there, and people were saying, "But who? Who's going to buy it? You know, what what bracket of bike does this fit into? Because, you know, it's not a Tora." because you can't put any hard luggage on it. You can only put a, a tank bag on. You probably better get some aftermarket soft, soft luggage, but you know, it's not really a touring machine. Plus, the pegs are quite high. There's a little bit of weight on your wrist, despite being very comfortable. You know, it's not an out and out sports bike because you're not going to be able to do track days on it. You know, it's not ultra sharp like, uh, you know, like the GSX-R, for example. I think what this is aimed at is someone probably my sort of age, who really wants a full-on sports bike, but just can't be doing with that really extreme position, you know, all of how on edge they are, wants something just a little bit softer, but not completely touring soft. And I think this is where this, this is what this bike is aimed at, that person, and I think with this new styling, it's really sharpened up the look of the bike, because I, I, I was never a fan of the first gen boost or the second gen it was just you know that styling looked like it had been melted but they've sharpened up the lines on this but still made it look like a Hayabusa so what's the comfort like well we've been riding all morning on these now and uh, I'm actually really comfortable the, the, the wrist weight is nothing to worry about it's not too extreme that you can't really spend all day in this position I think the most uncomfortable thing about the bike is the knee, but if you're a bit taller, I'm 6'2", is the knees. I'm feeling it in my knees a little bit. The seat is really comfortable. There's no issues with one's body. So it's just the knees, really. And perhaps you could get some aftermarket rear sets just to lower those pegs down slightly, and I think it'll be really comfortable. But it's certainly more comfortable than a full-on sports bike. Um, but not quite as comfortable as a dedicated tourer like the H2SX. It sits in the middle. What I've found is sometimes with Suzuki's, there's always something which you can think of which could be improved, whether that is throttle response, the brakes, you know, or, or something. But this one, nothing jumps out that needs improving. You know, that they've really, it's a very, very well-rounded machine. Woo. You know, the throttle, even in the A mode, you don't really need any other modes. The A is perfect. Just the right amount of instant go and, and no snatchiness. The brakes are very, very good. You know, there's nothing where you think, well, that could be better. The gearbox is nice. I found a couple of times when you're in, you know, it's really easy to find neutral, but when you go to first, it's been a, a reluctant a couple of times, but that could just be due to chain tension or whatever. But uh, the only other thing I'll change is a slightly higher screen because I'm a bit taller. Screen a little bit higher, but it's minor little things. You know, the bike is very, very well suspended. You know, it, it is, as a package, it's spot on. What are the standout features? For me, I think it's probably the suspension and, and the handling. The setup, you know, the whole bike, the chassis, everything. They, they've got that very, very nice, that, that balance between comfort and handling is fantastic. And then obviously the power, you know, it is super quick. And, the, you know, I think if you were riding with people on, with full-on sports bikes, they would not get away from you in the twisties. Obviously on track, you'd find the limits of this, I think, pretty quickly on track. But on the road, the way it just eats up the, the, the surfaces, you know, even if you've got a lot of potholes, poor surfaces, it just glides over it. And, the, and how st stable it is in the, in the twisties, that is the standout features, really, for me. But I think that is about it. What a day. A massive thanks to Suzuki UK for inviting me along on this. Really appreciate it. This is a fantastic opportunity to, to ride these bikes on UK roads, which is always quite nice. And with some runway action thrown in to be able to really unleash the full potential of the machine 
it's impressive it is impressive if you're not already subscribed please consider subscribing i'm going to be riding all of the new 2021 bikes this year we're going to be an hour out of lockdown in the uk i'm going to start doing the me and greg are going to start doing the comparison reviews again as well not sure what we're going to start with but uh, we're going to bring you those detailed comparison reviews i'd like to do a comparison with this but i just don't know what to compare it to that's the you know what do you compare this to it's almost in a, a class of its own this bike but thanks for watching as always and i will see you on the next video cheers guys this is power level one which is full power <laughs> What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. I did bring some timing equipment, but I forgot to. It's in back in the hangar, and I, I kind of want to go back. My launches aren't good enough to be worthy of timing anyway. I've tried the launch control. I may try a manual launch now without the launch control to see how that differs. So uh, this is the manual. We'll see if it's faster. I don't know what that was. That will runway comes up very, very quickly. <laughs> That'll do. I think the launch control is better than my launches though. That's a lot of fun. <laughs>